Greetings and salutations, everyone. <laughs> nah. Man, it's raining out here. It's cold. I got a tarp. My plan was, I thought that this place started shipping at 6. I would get here at 6, and I would have time to make it the same day this low today because it's only going about... I don't know the mileage, but it was calculated. It was like, it'd be like five hours away. And so I figured, okay, I get here at six. Um, I got into like eight, you know, so I got like a two hour window to like get there before like two o'clock. Well, place opens at seven. So I'm knowing the route that I have to go to get back up you know, get back to the place to get back on 65. And I was just like, it's, it's, it's not going to be possible. And then they got a tarp machine over here at this place and they only have, um, for y'all who are familiar, but if y'all are not familiar, it's a remote controlled, um, some hooks you hook your d-rings into the tarp pick it up pull it over and just drop it down on it and that that helps you that well that that gives the company that you're picking up from you know they won't be held liable if you you know were to slip or to fall off the top of the load because they are offering you a tarp machine so i was like well i'm not gonna same day it so I had no sense of urgency to get over there because even because I would have been cutting it, it would have been cutting it close anyway because even if I would have got over here at 7 and, you know, by some stretch of the imagination, got over here at 7, I would have to leave before 8. So I get here at 7. Um, it take about 15, 20 minutes to load. Then we got another 30 minutes or so um, to tarp, you know, so that puts me like, that puts me like 745, but it wasn't, but obviously it's not going to, it wasn't going to work that smooth though, you know, so, and then, and then it's raining on top of that, so it was just like, it's just the, it was just going to be impossible to do, so. So now I'm stuck with the conundrum of once I get loaded and leave here, I'm going to have to stop and then tomorrow I'm just gonna have to dead head all the way back home. And I looked and it's like like three hundred and fifty miles. So it is what it is. But yeah, but it's I ain't gonna say, yeah, but take a loss, but I mean, it's just, you know, it is what it is. We just make it back. I ain't gonna cry or wallow over no spilled milk or anything of that particular nature, so that's that. Um, I don't know if y'all watched my video yesterday, but I'm still, uh, I'm still just perplexed by that, man. <laughs> I did not follow I mean I, just, I literally took notes For all of this stuff I literally took notes From the gear ratios To You know Engine You know repair and all that stuff I literally took all, all the notes For all of this particular stuff And I just I didn't do it <laughs> I didn't do it but <clears throat> that being said, um, I don't even know how many pieces I'm getting. I wish I would get the load where they like load it flat and the tarps like lay right across it. But I feel like I'm gonna get like some BS where they have like four in the front and three, three, and then four in the back, and then that throws that throws it that throws the tarp off, especially when you're using a tarp machine because like. 
it's not gonna lay the tarp the tarp isn't gonna lay the way that you want it to lay and it has the overlap and stuff like that so uh you know it is what it is and then what's crazy is the grade of wood that i'm getting it's like some number three so number three wood isn't as good as number one and number two so you use it on tarp number three <laughs> because what ends up happening with number three is when you get to the location they're gonna unload you and they're gonna put it on the ground <laughs> they're gonna put it on the ground so I'm not a wood expert so I don't know what differentiates one two and three I, I, I'm I don't know if it has anything to do with the cut. I don't know if it has anything to do with the quality or the tree that it came from, but I know three and four, you know, you really not supposed to tarp it, but they want you to tarp it, so. And, and I've never been to this place before, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna risk it. But the funny, the crazy thing about it is, like I said, it's raining, so it's gonna get wet because when I, when I pull from underneath this bay that I'm in right now, I gotta go and scale and I gotta stand behind, I gotta stop behind the the tarp machine to throw my straps. So it's gonna get wet. So it is what it is, man. <laughs> it is what it is. But um and then I see that down in the south. I know they were talking about it's a chance for, you know, it was a, a small chance for snow. And I'm just like, we're not prepared for this. We don't have, we don't have like the shop trucks and all that different type of stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how all of this, uh, how this plays out. And uh, I was talking to my dad and I was telling him that, you know, I got to, you know, get the oil filter and stuff off like that. I just seen so many different videos. Some people say you can just cut it at the bottom and then just try to find a way to turn it like that. I don't really know what I'm going to do. But he was saying, like, man, you might want to wait till the, the weather is a little bit better. You know, it's going to be cold and whatnot like that. And I told him, I said, two weeks ago, I was in, I was in Ohio. Two weeks ago. And... I pulled into a bay, I got loaded, the guy said, throw two chains and go back outside. Cold, wind was blowing, it was snow on the ground, um, where you had driven the truck, what was, you know, was iced over, it broke the ice, so it's water right there. So I'm just like, it may be, you know, it may be, conducive to you since you know I'm asking you to kind of help me out conducive to you for the weather to be better but I'm just like I'm exposed to this on a daily basis you know I mean obviously I mean and that's not even just from the cold front it could be hot you know they want you to go out there and tarp it you know you just you just gotta go tarp it so I mean that's that's the that's the name of the game so only thing I can say I just gotta I gotta bundle up bundle up right and I'm getting so logo driven and branded driven now. I bought a a cat um, filter strap like wrench <laughs> because I bought one from the Freightliner for like a Detroit filter, but I don't know. Obviously, the filter I, I don't know what the situation. Maybe the filters are a little bit bigger, but that filter wrench doesn't fit on that filter. So I just went and got the strap wrench. And to turn it, you know, to get it off. So I'm gonna get it loosened, and we're just gonna go from there. I bought like a little pry, so if I have to pry it, you know, pry it off. Hopefully, I can, you know, I can get it off. Then I gotta go buy the, <clears throat> excuse me, I gotta go buy the oil and stuff. Um, they sell it at, they got it at Sam's Club. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go get that, and um. I'm gonna go from there, trying to fuel, filter, cooling, filter, all that good stuff like that. But what gets me, man, is the fact that they literally have the instructions on the side of the filter what to do. You turn it with your hands, so you can't turn it anymore, and then you, you put the filter wrench on there, and you make three quarters of a turn. 
some people now like me when I change the filter on my car and stuff like that I just turn until I can't turn anymore with my hand because I was told at one point in time like you know like the t like it'll just it's not gonna come loose like it almost like it'll like tighten itself up a little bit more even after that so I just I just can't get over this man that Such a minuscule mistake is gonna cost me so much, so much trouble, like that. So, I don't know. And I guess some, and then again, some people may say, "Well, you should change, you should change your oil anyway, stuff like that. You should, you should change your oil." But I agree. But at the same time, when you pay for oil change, the things that you're paying for, you're paying for a proper disposal of the oil. And you're paying for, you know, the facility. So, because I don't even want to think about what would happen if you get caught dumping oil somewhere that it don't, it don't need to go. So, I don't know. But anyway, man, I'm rambling on. I got to, I got to, I got to, um, I got to send somebody a message. So, I can be with y'all good people later, man. I'm probably going to stop. I'm going to Franklin, Kentucky, so. I got <clears throat> about two or three different truck stops. I uh, I stop it up there, so if it's five hours away, it's about, it's almost nine now, so is it 9 or 10, 10, 11, 12, 21, 22? So I should be starting up later in about four, four or five o'clock, so I can get the load off early, and then hopefully I can, I can, um, I can be back to the house when my wife go on lunch break, so I can go ahead and uh, get home and, um, go by the oil and stuff like that and do some more stuff. So, man, y'all be safe out there, man.